Okay, so welcome to Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. This is my very first live, and it's actually Marie's idea. So since it was her idea, she had no choice but to appear on the show. So the whole idea of this live format that I'm wanting to do, it's, it's part of the whole idea of building a community. I really want this channel to be a community that works kind of like Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia is great when people use sources, drop in the best information, and the community grows stronger together. But like Wikipedia, if we deliberately make nonsense articles and try to throw each other off, well, it won't be so great or useful. So let's keep that as, you know, hopefully our philosophy and our spirit, because that's why I'm doing this. I want to help out. I'm certainly not doing this for the money because some videos take, you know, 10 hours to build and make $20. So at $2 an hour, it'd have to be absolutely crazy to do this for the money. But I really want to create a community where we can talk together. And today's interview with Marie Pia, of mm -hmm. course, I'm going to be asking her questions about her experiences with, you know, the Maverick and before that, waiting on an escape plugin. And I'm going to be filling that in with all sorts of Maverick info. I've got the order guide right beside me. I want to cover important questions like, you know, how, what kind of miles per gallon can we expect? What does it feel like? What does it drive? What's the interior like? I also, of course, want to cover, you know, questions like that under cargo bin, which, you know, I made a small mistake the other week. I said it was on the XLT. It's on all models. I could have known that by going on Ford.com, but I was reading the order guide in the XLT section um, and it listed it out. Normally you don't repeat information, but my error, I'm, I'm of course, I'm going to, cor I've corrected that and I'm sorry for that. I've said it in another video as well, but, you know, we're going to be talking all about, you know, really important and commonly asked questions like does the fx4 package raise the height of the vehicle some major news sources and youtubers say yes others say no the answer is actually yes and no and i'll explain why a little bit later on i want to jump in to asking marie questions sooner as opposed to later later so she doesn't think i just invited her here to be uh, eye candy and you know doing that well but uh she's definitely here to answer questions and be part of an interview process so you know let's just put the pedal to the metal jump right in and get into the real interview part of all this so you know i want to present marie pia if you want to just maybe um say a little bit about yourself a little bit of your history quickly okay uh yeah so uh, about myself oh well uh, i'm working in insurance uh, car insurance company so I know a little bit uh, about cars, but not that much. Uh, <laughs> I Most of the time, I'm just here uh, at the make and the model, but I don't have the all the, the information about each model. So I found very interesting to have somebody in my life who really love to have more information about that. So sometimes I, I, I knew a little bit more than my clients and I could say, oh, yes, I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. Before and, that, you worked at a Toyota dealership in finance, and you're yes. a teacher for, for several years, and that's why when we've got something to do in the whole teach department, like we did with the <laughs> soft top removal and really the putting back on section, because alone, uh, I would have sworn a lot more. Uh, so she was there to help us out with that. So, you know, from time to time, Marie Guy just gives me a nice little helping hand as a guest. So, you know, I'm really interested in your experiences. You know, of course, my experiences are different because I'm in this pretty much every day. I often, you know, for the channel, put in 20, 30 hours a week between research, doing videos, and editing is a very long process. And what I like about this whole live is, uh, well, if I make a mistake, it's live. So that's on me. You guys can laugh and uh, that's fine and hopefully you'll you'll laugh because you're we're having a little uh, nightcap together but you know i want to just jump right into it what what is your experience with the maverick been so far how have you found it and i know maybe you're a little bit skewed because you waited a year on an escape <laughs> plugin and some other people got their escape plugins built and delivered um who you know i from what i can tell they they shop bought in May and here they are driving around their escape plugins. You never got yours. So 
you're I and of course I did make that horrendous mistake in thinking uh, late night on a Friday at closing I tried to find out uh, when you're getting built and I got confused with my codes <laughs> and told you your Maverick was getting built and now it's not going to be built in uh, November mm -hmm. um, so if it gets built in December time wise if she gets a build in December that means it'd be arriving you know it is coming from Mexico so that means probably a January arrival so we have our fingers crossed for yeah. a January build but how's your experience been in regards to you know how do you like it what do you think of it and what how do you find this whole experience yes it's a good question um so just to resume a little bit uh, i'm waiting uh, i was waiting for an escape i think it was the right uh, not the right time to to uh, do a comment for a new car during the COVID. And then uh, John uh, was asking me, hey, you really love the F-150 that we had before. Uh, do you want to switch to a Maverick? At first, I wasn't sure with the big F-150. I was like, oh, okay, I really loved it. But months and months passed and I was like, oh, no, parking that, it's too big. So I, I was okay, I, I want an SUV now, <laughs> my, my truck thing is done. Um, and finally he said, oh yes, but remember when we have a box uh, with the, the truck, we could put more stuff and we, we could do renovation, go search materials. It was easier uh, than with an SUV that we need to um, put a cover to don't put uh, grass and stuff in the back of a SUV. It's not like a a truck <laughs> yeah mary pierre is very much into design yeah. so i think i had her when i said the word renovations mm -hmm. she was in the pool <laughs> and she was maybe on her i got her on her second glass of wine and i'm like you know renovations would go a lot better and uh, that she just perked right up and she's like oh now i'm listening to your whole maverick talk and i've been talking about a maverick since um the first day um that it came out i was like oh my god you know there's going to be this small truck that should be great on fuel which we'll get to later on in the video i'll actually talk about some fuel uh, miles per gallon and liters per hundred kilometers but i think that's how uh how, how they got you yeah and because you said it it's smaller you won't have that that problem to park like the f-150 so i said okay yes i will think about it and we did the switch uh just in case we could have this one more faster than the other um and it was a a big switch i could say because i didn't have uh, the chance to see it uh, in person so uh, we just go with the the, the picture on internet and I said yes I think I will love it it, it looks cute we try to uh, uh, see how bigger it could be uh, compared to the Ranger the F-150 uh, to make my decision so it wasn't that easy to make a decision uh, it took me a few hours of re research yeah it's uh, the thing is the F-150 I had EcoBoost engine, almost 300,000 kilometers, drove like a dream, but it couldn't fit into her business's underground parking. I just want to say hi to Chris, uh, <laughs> Hamilton, Ontario. Thanks for watching in. For the Canadian viewers, uh, I hate to break this to you, but we're not always the first to get our vehicles. Um, <laughs> and I think we're going to find that out. We'll be a little later on the Maverick. You know, there have been some Mavericks already delivered in the United States and actually even um, a build date for a Rapid Red first edition. So Rapid Red had been a late availability color and now it looks like someone got a build date. So that's great. But in the States, you know, lower states, they'll get delivered sooner just because of transport now it's not really the transport i think that's going to delay us by maybe a month or two i think a lot of our mavericks are going to start showing up more in january sometime in winter i don't expect a ton uh, showing up in canada uh, i think there might be a slight priority for the u.s region so chris uh, that's a little information for you uh brian uh, you're in new york you are far away from the factory but your area definitely will be getting um some some Mavericks, um, probably before us. And uh, Sylvain, uh, Sylvain uh, welcome, also from Canada. So that's great to see some uh, some Canadian viewers and Jameson. So uh, Jameson's from, from St. Louis. So thank you very much for joining in with us. Um, getting right back into this, what were your thoughts about the Santa Cruz? I know I really covered that video and I kind of spoke for Marie, which, you know, wasn't, uh, I didn't mean to do that. It's just, I was presenting the vehicle. Uh, and I, I think I may have mostly presented your views correctly, but how did you find the Hyundai Santa Cruz? Yes, at first I, I was curious to go see it uh, in person because I didn't have the chance to see the Maverick. So it helps me uh, 
see uh, how bigger or how, how smaller it could be, uh, depends on how you see it. Um, and I was curious too, because I see in internet in, uh, pictures of um, uh, the look, the special look uh, that they, they gave to the Santa Cruz. Uh, so, um, is that a good kind of special or is, is, that, great, is that a not so good kind of special? What kind of special are we talking about? Yeah, it will be both of them. It, it's great for uh, Yande to uh, do a futuristic design like that, I could say. Uh, and that's cute for a futuristic design, but it's not for me. So for me, it's a, it's a big no. <laughs> you're, I think you're more of a, even what I, in the past with your SUVs, you prefer SUVs that have a truck look to it. So I yes, think you absolutely <laughs> love the Bronco Sport. Am I right? Yeah, that's why I really love the Bronco, uh, Bronco Sport or like yours. Uh, and I really uh, fall in love with my uh, 2008 uh, Escape because it was square then. So I really love that kind of look. Now, I know you didn't expect <laughs> this question in the interview because I didn't give them all. I kept some in my back pocket. Um, how do you feel about my error with the arrival of your the build of your Maverick? <laughs> Oh, the first time I was uh, a little bit shocked because <laughs> I was so happy uh, to have a, a building date uh, that's far, uh, that, that, that was close, sorry. Uh, so in November. Uh, so I was shocked the first day, but not that much. Um, is when you said to me that the person uh, did the comment on September, I was like, hey, I did it on July. What what ha What's happened? So yeah. we'll have the chance to talk about it after, I know. But um, yeah, but now it's okay. I, I continue to wait. Uh, it's been a year that I wait for the escape and after that the Maverick. So I'm okay to wait. <laughs> so I'm happy, you, I'm happy that Marie-Pierre mentioned that because one of the things that have been going and being said on the internet is that hybrids, won't be built. And then, you know, Ford answered hybrids will be built. And then some people were questioning, are they just saying that? Um, I even have um, one usual viewer that I get along really well with Rob, who was saying, I don't know if he was joking or not, or if he's just discouraged. He's saying, I guess I'll get my Maverick in 2023. Um, Ford is really, I promise you, they're building hybrids. Um, you know, I'm, I see, I've seen a hybrid get built and it even had the spray and bed liner and mm -hmm the four pin hitch. So four pin means it just does the lights on your trailer. So that's only good for 2000 pounds, but they got a build. They bought two months after Mary Pierre, Mary Pierre here. And what happened with that is, well, I guess I, I think, and I don't have any confirmed proof, but I think Ford wants to push out Mavericks. And if I were running Ford, after everything that's gone on with the, the Bronco and knowing that, you know, humans will be humans, they'll think that what happens in one instance will repeat itself. And it's not the case. What happened with the Bronco um, won't necessarily just automatically happen with other vehicles. And sometimes people say, well, I heard of someone who waited six months for their F-150. That means it'll take much longer for a new model like the Maverick. And that's not the case either. These are different models and they're under, you know, different constraints, different supply, different demand, different furnishers, you know, the people, the, the companies bring the parts. So it's just night and day. It has not, one has nothing to do with the other. And well, the Maverick is getting hybrid builds uh, right now. I don't see a whole lot of hybrids being set up to be built early on. And I do wonder and question if that's because the EPA numbers um, aren't officially out yet. And I don't believe Ford can deliver those and put them in the hands of clients until those numbers are out. So it would make sense in my head that between building EcoBoost quickly, which I think is what's going on, you know, after everything that's gone on and a lot of that had to do with COVID and the factories, uh, you know, factories being closed. So now after all that, you know, what you could say unwarranted, unfair, but still bad publicity, it, it happened uh, that things took a while and some places in the States, like I, of course I watch uh, Tim Bartz and he was saying that, you know, more like three months for an F-150 order. And out here in Canada, I don't know if they've forgotten us, but yeah, we get some two and a half, three month orders, but they're pretty rare. We get uh, a good amount of three, four, five months, and sometimes more um, if they're, you know, parts that really have constraints on them. But talking about parts that, talking about late lateness and whatnot, I just think that Ford's main goal is going to be to produce as many Mavericks as possible, make people happy, make the shareholders happy, and really 
very much make the clients happy because in this day and age, after everything that's gone on with the health crisis, people are more impatient than ever. Marie-Pierre works in customer service and talks to people. Uh, I work with you know people who are, who are in real estate, uh, really people of all sorts of pressure professions. And everyone is telling me that people's uh, patience level is at an all time low. And you know, that's unfortunate, but if you definitely want to avoid um, dealing with a later delivery, they are still building hybrids. And I just think that they'll build more eco boosts than they will um, hybrids. Maybe they'll build, you know, 23 to 30% of their builds now. And also take note that the factory will start pushing out Mavericks much faster in later months. At first, and I, I said this back uh, very early on with the Bronco in May and June, I said, you, you don't put on the factory, the printer at full speed when you're not sure and guaranteed that they're all going to come out perfectly. And if they don't, well, if you have less, one, you can take your time, get it right, double check, check, triple check, inspect, correct. You know, you inspect once they're, once they're built, you find if there's any errors, you correct the ones that are already out of the factory, you correct the machines. So that's all part of the process. You can't go full speed, but definitely things to avoid. You know, of course I have the order guide and there is late, a late avail availability section. So I'm just going to check on my phone right now. You know, from memory, it was mud guards and a few other things. So you got the splash guards, the molded splash guards. You want to avoid that on your order. You'll want to avoid the bed tray liner. That's the the hard. You'll want to the 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 bed tray liner. That's like the flooring. Uh, I jokingly and kind of seriously said in other videos, I wouldn't pay for that. I'd just get a cow mat and co cover it up. Good enough for a cow. Good enough for me. Um, also, the bed liner hard drop in. Yeah, Marie laughs because she knows I live actually lived in a tractor <laughs> shed for a number of years and I will I was happy I must I, I try to be as stoic as possible you just you deal with your with your stuff and you don't let things bother you um you've got the bed divider kit uh you've got the bed liner hard drop in so that's the hard plastic bed liner avoid that that's late ability and cargo management system mounted bed crossbars so and then I believe it's also, I'm not seeing it here, but I was under the impression that tonneau covers, now the bed covers could slow things down. Anyways, here's a simple principle I apply. If you can get it at the parts department and you want your vehicle, get your vehicle, get the parts, do order the parts in advance. You know, just a quick little bit of Bronco talk, um, bags, bags for your doors. You want to take your doors off? The bags are back ordered. So even if you think you're getting your Bronco in eight, you know, four or five months from now, order the bags now. I ordered them about two weeks before my Bronco showed up. So right around uh, late August. And I still don't have my bags for the doors yet. So that's why I haven't done any videos with uh, the, the doors off. And also because, well, Maverick stuff has been taking up a, a bit of time. I do definitely want to cover a new product as adequately as possible. But uh, back to questions for Marie, because I'm talking far too much. And I think we all, most of us want to hear her talk. I certainly do. Um, so you've covered your thoughts on the Maverick. Now, mm -hmm. of course, I've actually sat in the vehicle. So I've had to tell you that it's it's fantastic that, you know, I get in and out without hitting my head. The space up front was incredible. I'm 5'10", so I had a ton of space in plenty of space in the back. I would go to Toronto sitting back there. And as of October 5th at 6 a.m., I'll have my my live drive videos on where I actually sit and drive in the vehicle. So we'll cover all that. We'll leave that mostly for another day. But uh, do you have any other thoughts on the Maverick? I know you've talked about how much you, you like the styling. Yes. Uh, to compare to the Santa Cruz, again, the outside, because I didn't see that much the inside of the Maverick. I look at some videos, but uh, it, it's always better to see it in person. But uh, I really love the, like I said, the, the, the square look uh, on the Maverick uh, compared to the Santa Cruz. But I, uh, I look forward to uh, sit in a Maverick because in the Santa Cruz it was so comfortable. I never sit, uh, I never sat uh, in a truck or a car that was comfortable like that. So I hope uh, for the Maverick it will be the the same love. <laughs> and I do know you, you know, your main reason for getting an Escape 
plug-in, at first you're like, no way, I'm not buying in mm -hmm. Canada a $40,000 vehicle. But then with the government incentives and whatnot mm -hmm. on a lease, it was really affordable. So the mm -hmm. Maverick, I think you're drawn in by the price. But would you be getting it if it wasn't hybrid? And. Uh... Probably not. Uh, I will explain why. I see uh, Cliff uh, has uh, written uh, that he changed his hybrid to an EcoBoost and was selected uh, the same week. Uh, on my side, I really wanted uh, an escape plug-in to don't pay gas anymore because I'm not. Uh, I'm working not that far from the house, so I should be able to uh, go all the way to electric uh, with the plug-in, uh, all the way down and all the way up. And then when John made me switch for the Maverick, I was like, yeah, but oh, the plug-in, I will save on gas. Uh, so he said, yeah, but the hybrid, he, and he showed me uh, how, um, how can I say that? Uh, it, it doesn't cost that more uh, that that much gas with the yeah. hybrid. So on my side, I won't do uh, the switch to an EcoBoost. I, I love the EcoBoost on, uh, for example, F-150s. But this time, I really wanted uh, something electric to don't pay that much gas. So for me, it's... Uh, Already, uh, okay, I stay with the gas anyway, but I don't want to go with an EcoBoost because of that. I want to try it. Well, you drove the Bronco Sport um, 1.5 liter EcoBoost. And, you know, when I told her it was a 1.5, she came and did a video with me. And I said, oh, bring it, bring it from the front out back. So she just drove it for maybe 800 feet. And she got out of it and she's like, wow, I love that. And I was like, Imagine if you would have driven a two liter EcoBoost, you would have had a blast. And the Maverick EcoBoost is an absolute bat blast. It's a barrel of laughs. I just want to point out, I really appreciate a, a legend in the house, uh, Tim Bartz, uh, who's been unbelievably helpful to people through YouTube for seven years or more now. Um, really huge that uh, he's here. Thank you, Tim, so much for, for joining. And thank you so much for, you know, confirming that, you know, hybrids are needing EPA testing before um, they can go out. And, you know, like I said earlier, I don't have any, you know, any factual evidence, but in my head, if I were running a factory, I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, let's pump out a whole bunch of hybrids that we can't actually send out because they need EPA numbers. And let's just go park them because we saw with the Bronco, you know, proven history, the, the Bronco story, people, a lot of people who had their Bronco out at Dirt Mountain or Sand Mountain or whatever you want to call it were rather quite upset and you know i did in video say hey you know ford's gonna review these vehicles and make sure that you know they're perfect uh, just like when i got my bronco um it was i'd say too perfect because marie pierre actually said that it was the greatest day of her life and uh, i was like mm, okay so i guess i really messed up the proposal um <laughs> i guess uh, yeah i guess i haven't been doing a very good job as uh, as fiance uh material <laughs> because i was surprised i didn't expect the bronco to be that, that bigger uh so yeah i really loved it because of that it's impressive and when you see uh, it in front of yeah you. so so exactly why i was bothered uh, i figured it was because it was big and impressive and i figured hey at 510 i guess i'm not big and impressive because i certainly did not give her the best of day of her life when i proposed to her but hey what can you do you know i got to deal with 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 who i am got to deal with what god gave me i just wanted to let you know that i was happy <laughs> yeah i know but uh, she was honestly uh really quite happy about the bronco and like i said back in january where, when people were talking about canceling their orders because they were worried the diffs would be rusted in the act the, the axle mm -hmm. i was like hey that thing's like thick thick steel you know, the rust will never go through it's not an issue whatsoever and it's probably just a bad batch. And that's exactly what it was uh, the underneath of my Bronco and every single Bronco that's come by. Um, you know, my brother's been at the dealership for, for, for 28 years together. We keep each other in the loop. Every single Bronco that has come by the underneath has been absolutely perfect. And soon, actually one of the dirt mountains, actually two of the dirt mountains, but very soon on transport, I've got um, news that a dirt mountain 
Bronco is going to be showing up. And that's pretty cool because uh, Ford is really going f like fast and furious. It's incredible. They're just dumping tops on the lots so that they can drive them back to factory, throw on the new tops and get them to clients as soon as they're inspected and guaranteed to be, you know, A-OK. -okay. And I think that's a barrel of last, you know, just drop the tops. I will clean it up later. It's not a priority. The priority is getting Broncos to their owners to the point where they actually went in and retooled and mostly took over the Wabasso factory. And that's incredible because that's out of pocket. And, um, you know, the design, a lot of people were saying the design must have been bad. It's on Ford and, you know, really being negative without knowing. And that's what I mean. Like, I want this channel and community to kind of be like Wikipedia, where we make sure we got our sources right. We can speculate, but say you're speculating, but don't present it as a fact. Some people were presenting it as a fact that the top was just a bad design, that it was all Ford's fault. They were just being, and it's okay to get emotional, but don't necessarily need to make it public and present things as fact when you're being emotional. So it turns out the design was good. They just needed to add plastic, which when I thought saw the snake skin um, kind of coming through, I said, it kind of looks like the membrane, the, the middle between the two sheets of plastic kind of looks like it's showing through because the plastic's too thin. So it just looks like a tooling issue. So thank, thank goodness that's what it was and it's all worked out. Um, let's see if there's any other questions I need to jump on. One of them was, you know, why did Marie's build did not get messed up? I, I always try to be data driven, very factual into facts. And when I speculate based on, you know, a logical assumption, I say, Hey, this is a, an educated guess. Her escape was a code. Uh, it, it has, you know, the order codes out here, they go letter two numbers and a letter and her escape was a J01P. And then her, sorry, her, I'm getting it mixed up again. Her the escape, the Maverick is J01P. Her escape was uh, J02P. And I, I laid on a Friday when the dealership was trying to close, I kind of snuck in and I was like, Hey, I need to see the computer. And uh, it kind of jumped in and I looked under uh, J0, uh, J0, one yeah sorry j02p and it was another it was another client's build it had nothing to do with hers her maverick is actually under a j01p so anyways so um, i was thinking yeah. was my maverick but the code wasn't the it was just a little bit different so yes yeah, not because they pushed back my date it's just because john uh <laughs> speculated that it was mine and it was not <laughs> but it was the same color it was an hybrid xlt uh the only difference is that i will have the luxury package so maybe that's why i don't have it in, uh, yet uh, we have more stuff to put on it so yeah we don't know because it was an hybrid so hybrid will go uh, in the dealership it's not a problem but like john said maybe they won't uh, uh, do that much hybrid just a little proportion so we don't know <laughs> yeah and, and that's when you don't know you just got to say you don't know we don't know is it a is there more so uh, much more demand than there is supply Quite possibly, but is it I, the trouble with the luxury package? We don't know. It's COVID. We we need stocks. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and I would think that, you know, if it does, you know, if we remember luxury package does require um, a little bit more extra work, maybe the factory is just focused on getting as many people their Mavericks as possible. And what's great with news is equipment. with less equipment, some people have already gotten their Mavericks, uh, like Mr. Boone 5.0. He's um, doing his road tests and pretty impressive. Um, he was somehow able to pull on an EcoBoost on only a slight, uh, well, he did one on a slight incline, a slight decline, and he seemed to mostly be playing zero to 60 times around uh, zero to 60 miles per hour, sorry, 100 kilometers an hour. If I recall, he was at about 6.65 seconds on average. Quick mental math gives me about 6.65 as an average and about 15 seconds on the quarter mile. So that EcoBoost is fast. At least it was in his case. Now Ford, if I'm not mistaken, I have my sheets over at the other end of the office and I don't want to wake Winston up because he might start misbehaving. <laughs> but uh, I believe Ford was talking about 6.9, which is still faster than the Santa Cruz's 2.5 liter turbo, which is talking about seven seconds. Um, 
Santa Cruz has more power, and we really liked – we test drove that. We really liked the power on the Santa Cruz, both of us. We, we liked the engine note, but it is heavier than the Maverick. And, you know, I'm also much more for the styling. I like truck styling, and I'm much more for the Maverick. Uh, I also really loved the EcoBoost it sound. It has a fantastic exhaust note. The hybrid has pretty much – no exhaust note, which is actually great for a hybrid because usually what I dislike strongly about hybrids, they normally cost more. Yeah, I'm cheap. Uh, no, doesn't work for me. They, on, on top of it, they're usually noisy. Mm, yeah, that doesn't, uh, well, I like noisy if it's, you know, a V8 or if it's, you know, the two liter EcoBoost has a great, a good, a very good sound to it. But usually hybrids have a horrible, bad loud noise to it they just sound bad that wasn't the case for the maverick it sounded great uh what else uh normally you have no next to no power the acceleration is horrible and it's not smooth it's jerky when the gasoline engine turns on normally they sound like an old broken fridge um but yeah the mavericks hybrid i absolutely loved i also really loved soon i'll be coming out with some test drive uh, footage from the escape plug-in also another vehicle that you know is so smooth it's quiet it's powerful now the escape plug-in has 221 horsepower but similar torque um to the maverick the maverick hybrid had oh my goodness uh, <laughs> oh my buddy dave uh the day from all terrain nation uh, <laughs> says he's dropping in and he decided to also drop and throw a five dollars at me so i'm gonna have that's that's very kind of you. It's if anything, uh, Dave has helped me out um, in the past, taken his time. Uh, he's got to be the nicest YouTuber uh, I, ever. Uh, now I haven't. That's not factual. That's emotional because I haven't spoken and dealt with every single YouTuber. Obviously, that'd be quite impossible. But uh, thank you, Dave, for for showing up. That's fantastic. <laughs> Double thumbs up. Uh, I hope you're you're having one with me, buddy, because I usually get pretty smashed on your videos. Um, sorry to. <laughs> give a little truth. And that's, you know, the quiet nights at the end where I say, Hey, I've been quiet and haven't been commenting on Dave's uh, videos. It's normal. Normally when I figure yeah, I've had a little too much to be uh, publicly speaking uh, for, for Dave's video. So anyways, glad he's here now, you know, just getting back to the whole um, Maverick, the hybrid does have an incredible drive to it. It's smooth. You know, you're not going to have that exhaust note, but I think most people that are looking for fuel efficiency, I think Ford hit the nail right on the head. You're not, <laughs> Dave, thanks again for the $5 <laughs> again, a second time. <laughs> not, you know, really appreciated, but you definitely don't have to do that. But um, yeah, the, the, he wants to help feed the poodle. <laughs> yeah, he, he's definitely helping to feed the, the poodle who's finally not scratching on the bed and being a huge distraction. But no, the Maverick hybrid was very smooth. Smooth. It was quiet. Don't buy it thinking you're going to get, you know, this amazing exhaust note. If you want amazing power and amazing sound, go with the two, two liter EcoBoost. Um, it's uh, it's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave, Dave, you're, you're too funny. You're making, you're both cracking us up um, as normally we watch you and crack up. Now, you know, we've got Marie's thoughts on the Maverick. I really look forward to her doing her own road test. Uh, I really liked it. I liked both easy in, easy out, lots of space on the inside. You know, I took some notes. I didn't have the exact measurements when I was, I didn't have a whole lot of time with the Maverick. And I didn't want to just, you know, assume that it was about 10 by 10 and about, you know, 20 some inches long. But uh, Boom 5.0 has also taken those measurements for us. And he said it's the cargo space under the rear seat. That's nine inches deep. It's nine inches, um, I guess you could say wide. And then length, we'll call length, you know, sort of window to window. Well, that length is 20 inches on the first cubby hole. And keep in mind, if that's on an EcoBoost. An EcoBoost will then have another cubby hole. But if you get the hybrid, well, with the hybrid, the next cubby hole is basically taken up by the battery. So keep that in mind. You have a little less under seat storage on the hybrid than you do the EcoBoost. But what's interesting is later on, we're going to have extra space for another battery on the, the Maverick. So I truly believe... And this would fall into how Ford has been unveiling um, electric uh, hybrid vehicles over the years. They sort of start out slow and get more intense. You know, if we think back to, you know, the whole escape, that's how it worked, um, the fusion. So I'm really thinking that probably 
two, maybe three years, we'll get an all-wheel drive version, if not next year. And they just need to work things out in um, the rear suspension. And they also need to work things out in the tra between the transmission and the electric motor, but mostly in the transmission, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have those notes in front of me. But anyways, they've got two little areas to work on, and then they can throw all-wheel drive as the Escape already has all-wheel drive. Some people speculated that this was done deliberately, that they could have done it from day one. But no, with the new electric motor that Ford's making in-house, it's very similar to the Escape's hybrids electric motor, but with some small modifications. It ends up being 20 pounds lighter, uses less copper, and how they install the magnets they do it in the process and i don't remember the exact terms i do have a video that covers that and i use the technical language um, but essentially the magnets are built into the whole unit um and I, like i said i can't remember the terms and i don't want to get it wrong this is mostly supposed to be an interview with mary pia so let's get the focus <laughs> back on her and try to throw her uh, another question but just before i want to say hi to kim uh, she wrote before that she listened to every videos uh, about the mavericks and read magazine uh, she said she's about to go crazy about that um that's why i can't wait i'm on a facebook group uh, for the maverick and i really enjoy uh, seeing uh, all the community together said hey i have my maverick and everybody congrats guy <laughs> so i really love that it's it's special it's, it's like a special moment so i can't wait <laughs> so i totally get you kim <laughs> so i just want to cover something you know that i thought was a little confusing if you're looking at an XL or XLT or even a luxury, uh, sorry, a Lariat without luxury pack, don't expect to get Sync 3. So if you're a longtime Ford fan and Ford user, don't expect to be getting Sync 3. But I, you know, my Bronco is a Badlands and I've been nonstop on the Android Auto. So do keep in mind XL, XLT, and, you know, a standard straight up Lariat, you're going to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And for the Android Auto, it has been fantastic. I did seven hours of road and more like seven and a half because I did the same bridge three times because I kept missing my exit. I'm too polite of a driver. I wasn't aggressive enough. Whatever. A few an extra 45 minutes out of my day and I didn't cut anyone off. So eh, whatever. Um, that Android Auto is fantastic. Normally, manufacturers, if you want to, if you want your navigation to tell you what speed you're allowed to drive, you got to pay top dollar. And at Ford, that's usually the case as well. And you know, it comes with Android Auto. They tell you what the speed limit is, so you know exactly how much faster you can go without getting pulled all over. They tell you where the speed cameras are. I couldn't be happier. I didn't get a ticket uh, from those darn cameras, which really bugs me. But anyways, not nearly as much as stop signs on a three-way road, which makes no sense when a government's talking about, you know, trying to be all about the environment. And then they throw, you know, stop sign on a main intersection on a road that only three houses live on. So try to convince me that that makes any sense, but it, well, it doesn't. So moving <laughs> right along, FX4 package. I tried to talk Marie into the FX4 package and she kept saying, hey, you've got your off-road machine. Stop trying to, you know, stop trying to convert my machine into exactly what you would want. She wants a hybrid and that makes total sense. Um, and But had I sold her on the idea of the FX4 package, I want to talk about something that's been causing a lot of confusion. You know, there's some places where there's absolutely no mention of the FX4 adding ride height. And then other places I saw, you know, on the Maverick, one of the Maverick forums, it was saying, and it was looked very much like something from Ford saying that the FX4 does add height. And then you've got some YouTubers saying it doesn't and other YouTubers saying it does. Well, I applied a little bit, you know, I just thought about it. What could possibly be causing this? And the answer is simple. It's tire size. So I looked up the tire sizes on the regular FX4 package, and I'm going to have to use this from memory. No, I have found my note. It's 225, 65, 17. That's on the regular FX4 package. Now, if you pay extra uh, loom backs and get the, the different mags for the FX4 package and the different tires, well, you do get uh, uh, three 
mountain snowflake rated uh, three peak snowflake rated tires meaning legally you can drive them you know year round and they'll be pretty decent they won't be the best in on ice or in deep snow but they'll get the job done they'll be legal well those are 235s 65 17s so i threw that into a tire size calculator and really what that gives you is it gives you a half inch of difference now a half inch on tire more now of course there's you know it's half it's an inch a half inch all around so on the bottom section the part that's actually affecting your height that's a quarter of an inch so in other words you get a quarter inch of extra ride height on the fx4 package with the optional mags and tires now is there something else going on i couldn't find anything else and that is definitely at least accounting for a quarter of an inch so there is a slight difference in ride height. Now, Marie-Pierre has picked, you know, as she said earlier, her reasoning to getting this Maverick is she wants to be able to do Renaults. She won't get the back of an escape completely scratched up. And, you know, I like things to go quickly. I don't like to spend 45 minutes loading something simple into the back of the vehicle and putting up blankets. So the Maverick works. <laughs> doesn't have that patience. <laughs> I don't have that patience. I want, I want to get to playing with the stuff. You know, right now we're rebuilding, kind of trying to do a semi-dream garage and uh, and do, of course, keep up with the channel. But uh, I like to be able to throw things into a bed. But she's getting the Maverick because of fuel economy. So Marie doesn't know this, and I guess I get to tell you right now, I've got some pretty good guesstimates on real-life fuel economy based on your driving, and your driving is different than my driving because you drove, you rose, actually. You you made my liters per 100 kilometers. You, you got worse fuel economy with F-150. She, <laughs> she drives in the city, and she does like to accelerate and then brake, and I'm more, I like to accelerate hard, but then I coast. So hybrid miles per gallon let's just jump right into that i think it's an important subject mm -hmm. you know marie i expect you to get 40 to 48 miles per gallon in the city now part of that is based on mike levine being able to get 50 point something 50.6 right around there miles per gallon in the city um marie has probably a heavier foot than him so she'll get probably more <laughs> like 48 if she's nice um but she'll easily easily get 40 and that actually goes right in with my experience as anything at Ford, and I've driven a lot, you know, the Fusions, the Escapes. I've, I've played around with the Ford electric and hybrids, and I always find it very easy to get better fuel economy than the, the EPA numbers. So I actually think that a lot of people are going to be getting, you know, 45 miles per gallon or a little less or a little more in the city. Um, now, Ford's saying 40 miles per gallon, and I think Ford likes to... Um, uh, over over deliver not over yeah sorry and instead of under deliver they like to over deliver they like to put a number out there and then have you be happily surprised which actually reminds me of the horsepower wars back in the 1960s you know of course i wasn't alive but i do love history I have a, that's what my bachelor's degree is i'm beyond philosophy degree um as well but anyways um in the 60s ford really liked to be able to say oh yeah it has 340 horsepower you saved on your insurances and then it had like close to 400 well i think they're doing that with fuel economy so i think a lot of people are going to be getting you know about 45 in her case i think 48 miles per gallon in the city so that's five to six liters per 100 kilometers now on the highway you know some people had trouble believing me when i said this in another video on the highway the hybrid will actually be less efficient because the battery you know you're fighting against wind resistance and the battery can't help out nearly as much well it could but it actually um gets used up when you're on the highway you know you're driving at 120 against the wind uh, or you know 75 miles per hour if you pr prefer and you're fighting against the wind that battery gets depleted so i'm thinking probably 33 to 36, maybe 37 um, miles uh, per gallon on the highway. Whereas the EcoBoost, I actually talked to some, some trainers, and based on what they're saying, I'm thinking 32 to 35 miles per gallon, um, depending on speed and your driving habits. You know, are you the type of driver that just loves to pull out in front of people because, and because they're doing, you know, 75 miles per hour and you think you want to do 77 miles per hour but then you actually slow down in front of them and do 74 and you do this battle back and forth for hours on the highway well if you are that kind of driver 
you, I have no patience and I go crazy, but, uh, Hey, different strokes for different folks. Uh, if that makes you happy, just don't do it in front of me. I'm a blue Bronco. Please don't do it, which we'll get to. I ruined the Bronco and Maria was pretty preeminent about how I ruined the Bronco. So 32 to 35 miles per gallon is actually 6.5 to 7.5 liters per hundred kilometers. Uh, that'd be the EcoBoost on the highway. I think that's very doable. Now, in the city, uh, EcoBoost. I don't have that rate off and I don't want to get it wrong. I don't know what I did with those notes, but I'll have to get right back to that when I do find them. So I'll post them up in another uh, video. But uh, question for Marie Pierre mm -hmm. What do you think about Mavericks being, you know, dealers asking 10,000 USD, so US dollars? Yeah over MSRP, so that's a manufacturer that's suggested retail price. Uh, here in Canada, I don't see that often. Uh, I didn't see that at all. <laughs> so I think it's a new thing with the COVID. Uh, the dealer doesn't have that much car and we we, we start to see that. Um, on my side, I think uh, what makes the, the Maverick um, have uh, been sold that much that people uh, put comment. Uh, there's a lot of comment of the Maverick. Yeah, many many people want it. It's because of the Very good popular. price. If they sold it uh, like ten thousand dollars more, I don't think people will love the car that much. It, it's because of the price and the look. It's like a little F one fifty. Uh, for that price, I think it's very practical for people who can afford F-150s and want to have a, a, a truck with a bed to put stuff in it, on it. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not a big fan when they does that. I know they does that for the Bronco, too. Um, people will care less about that kind of model, I think, if they do that. So, and you, what do you think? Uh, I think it's I think it's ridiculous, and I think some people, you know, they just jump to the conclusion that Ford is somehow profiting from this, and they, you know, they get all yeah. upset with Ford, and that's that's again an emotional response, not fact based. And I want to, you know, help the community out, and you know, if w when there's a reason to be frustrated, let's put the frustration in the right place at, at least, and that's one hundred percent dealers. This has been going on with the Bronco early on. I said, hey. You know, in one video, I took five minutes to talk about how you can ensure getting the right price on your Maverick. And some person, someone, and fair enough, they thought more or less I was crazy or dumb and was like, no, Mavericks, the, the whole point of the truck is to be affordable. You know, it will never sell over MSRP. And here we have, you know, we saw it. Uh, if you follow the Maverick forums, we saw a dealer asking, and it was more a little more than 10,000 USD for the Maverick. And this is why I covered this uh, early on. I would have been maybe end of June. I was saying, you know, get a signed offer. So get the dealer to print out what your interest rate is, what your payment is, how many months. Talk about that with them and, you know, work out, you know, if you're going to put a down payment, if you're going to lease or if you're going to buy. So that way you make sure that whatever price they put on that offer, they sign it and get a copy make another copy in case you lose the first copy and hold on to that. And speaking of making copies, um, in my last video on the Maverick, I was talking about, you know, what's going to happen with this whole, you know, free all wheel drive for people that had picked out 4k towing with a front wheel drive. Now I was early on the game saying, Hey, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to switch to all wheel drive. So for anyone who, you know, did that switch so they could get their Maverick, hopefully at least have a chance to get it sooner instead of later. They got that, you know, they get that reward, maybe getting your Maverick sooner. But then do you really get the the, the 2000 or so dollars free all wheel drive? Well, the answer simply put is quite possibly not, but phone up your dealer and ask them to conserve your original order sheet. With that, they can do an order. They'll know where to call. And I can't remember the, the, the correct department to call, but it did, you know, I had, I've seen this done on um, a Super Duty that got turned from a 2021 into a 2022. And, you know, it was in order to reserve the the, the, the month it got switched, um, the promotions from that month were, you know, desirable um, because now there aren't really 
you know, there, there's no nowhere near the same promotions. So anyways, that original order sheet um, was conserved. So if your dealer can or does conserve that original order sheet, that's the type of paperwork that, you know, if you provide with Ford, there are good chances uh, that it'll be approved that you also get um, that all wheel drive. Cause that's essentially a proof that you originally ordered 4k with front wheel drive. So Definitely, definitely want to uh, call your dealer and make sure they hold on to that sheet. You can always ask for, a, you know, possibly ask for a copy. And I don't know if that's internal use only, but they definitely need to hold on to that to make a request to Ford to get you free all wheel drive. And that's only if you had front wheel drive with 4K towing, which is absolutely not available and hasn't been for a while, but now it's much more public than it was, um, you know, a few weeks ago maybe it was a little bit more than a few weeks. I always have trouble uh, with my short-term memory. Now, moving right along, uh, Marie-Pierre. Mm -hmm. So uh, this week, you told me I ruined the Bronco. You want to... <laughs> yes. Want to talk about that a little bit? So, and I didn't yeah. do. I promise, I didn't do it deliberately. I know <laughs> no, I was a little hurt that you did say that uh, getting the Bronco, and you'd only had it for like fifteen minutes, and you said it was the 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 greatest day or best day of your <laughs> life. Uh, I didn't ruin the Bronco to sort of get back at you. But do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, I don't know if you saw uh, the picture, uh, the thumbnail for the, for the live. It was <laughs> the the Bronco of John uh, this week. Uh, what it looks like um he put stickers on it but it was like a retro stickers of the the whole bronco so we see um few lines of colors so you have the the orange uh yellow and red uh so it looks very vintage it's cute it's a cute sticker um to remind That's... us the old Bronco, <laughs> but on this one, I found that it looks like a toy. It's like a plastic car. And like I said to him, comes he's always shopping for new stuff to put in or on the Bronco. And I said to him, stop doing a Christmas tree, please. It, it looks great like that. Yes, you can have little uh, things, but not that much. So don't do that mistake. Uh, so yeah, I really think it looks like a a toy now and because we had the line that uh, that's on the uh, the doors it looks smaller i think so uh, let let us know what do you think if you uh, you say you see the picture uh, but on my side it, you say it's, it's you say not it's not that great you say it's <laughs> cute me. tonight when we're on live but i do recall it being compared to a 70s snowmobile which it's i was kind of like oh cool maybe she kind of likes it but then she also mentioned it to a 1970s snowsuit that um, her parents had. Um, and then she reminded me that she's not a fan of 1970s styling, which I think actually is, I, I thought it was pretty cool. But part of it too was um, m my brother who's worked at Ford for 28 years, has incredible taste, has one of the nicest, most probably the nicest de in home in regards to decoration inside and outside I've ever seen um, I always have beautiful stuff so always huge huge home <laughs> beautiful everything he has is just perfect and the guy I, I asked him I said hey what can I what accessories should I get on my Bronco and he's like oh yeah get this sticker it's, it's gonna it's so awesome it's gonna be great you'll you'll have this retro look and I figured hey if the guy with the best style I've ever uh, known uh, if he is into this then I will drop the it ended up being a $130 installation. Yeah, but next time, ask his wife. I'm pretty sure that her, if it's not 100% uh, her idea about the decoration, it's around that, maybe 90 because I know that uh, his wife has a great taste. So maybe next time, ask her. <laughs> And the reason I didn't, I usually always ask her. I'm not crazy. I'm not playing with fire. I normally would, heck, oh, even before, before buying food sometimes at the grocery store, I'll send her a photo. I'm like, hey, what do you think of if I pick this up? I always send her photos of things to get her approval. But she was at work, and I didn't want to bother her. But now I'm the one that's hot but and bothered, I guess, um, because I've been getting picked on not only by her, but – Basically, I went from driving around feel, feeling like I was driving a Lamborghini because driving a Bronco, this thing is so unique. People just, you know, their and eyes huge. go big and, they, you know, they, they come talk to you and they're like, wow. And, and you're like 
you know, hey, I, I don't have any more time to talk about you to answer your questions about the Broncos. Sorry. Um, I feel like I'm driving a Lamborghini that I can actually drive over stuff and not worry about scratching everywhere. But now since I have the stripes, people look at me and I'm wondering, are they judging me? <laughs> so maybe we'll remove the stickers. We don't know. <laughs> Let us know what you think. <laughs> would also love, because I am going to review all the comments uh, later. Um, I would love to know what accessories. I'm willing to spend maybe $1,000 to $2,000 in accessories more on this uh, Bronco. I'm, I'm at about $1,000. Once I get my bags in, I'll be at about $1,200 um, because I do want those door bags. Obviously, I can pass them on to the next Bronco because the, the, the goal of this channel is, you know, more cars, more power, of course. And I actually really love the power of the Bronco. If I had a two liter EcoBoost Maverick, I'd never really think of increasing the power uh, because the power on that is very good. But um, more cars, more power. So I'll be getting hopefully an F-150 Lightning. I am night one at 11.32, ran from the bedroom down to uh, into the office, ordered that up in my, uh, my undies, I guess. And uh, it was pretty important. So uh, I rushed put out that credit card and hopefully I'll be one of the first people to get that lightning. Uh, yeah, you have many messages. Yes. Yeah, I missed <laughs> a lot of messages. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, no, uh, the Bronco. Too. Yeah, Dave, obviously, and a few others, uh, thankfully, are here for the Bronco content. So I'm only getting it near the, the end of the video. I absolutely love the Bronco. It's an absolute beast uh you until you put stickers on it you know people are looking at you because it is because it is the hottest most desirable vehicle on the market right now um i feel like a, a movie star and uh, and i'm really not so lots of attention it's very very cool and yeah it drives really well i've driven it off sidewalks uh, of course i haven't hit thrown it into the woods yet because um, my parents have actually a uh, about 200 acres and right now they've got six to seven feet high um blackberry bushes pretty much everywhere it's and these the things time. you know they're the base is pretty huge and they've got spikes all over so and i just got my wrap marie pierre said i wasn't allowed to go play with the bronco until i get the wrap so <laughs> this week i just got the bottom of the vehicle wrapped um but about i'd say about eight inches and that will help, but until I can off-road with the doors off, I can handle a few scratches in the front. I can't handle a scratch that goes the length of the vehicle. So I want the bags to get the doors off. And, you know, if I wait just a little bit longer, nature is just going to kill most of all, all the vegetation. And I'll be much more keen to jump it into the woods. But what I can tell you is... Quebec roads are much more off-road than a lot of the footage I've been looking at that is on gravel roads. I think it's, you know, the gravel roads are better than 90% of the roads here. So what I can tell you is on roads that normally have, you know, holes that range from one to four or five inches, I just fly through that. Uh, no issues whatsoever. The suspension is pretty darn quiet. The 2.7 liter EcoBoost is an absolute dream um it's missing it has some exhaust sound it's missing a bit of exhaust sound but so she prefers that actually and actually um you drove us to the marriage uh the first first weekend the first day we had it uh she spent an hour driving it to a marriage an hour driving it back how did you feel about uh, about the bronco uh again <laughs> for my uh, my girl's opinion uh, very comfortable because i know the guys look at the speed uh, uh how it perform but on my side it's the uh, if it's comfy so that's a big yes a uh, big seat so we're very very good in that car and on the road we didn't feel uh, bumps uh, at all so that's great and we are so higher uh i don't know if it's higher than the f-150 or equal but we really feel like uh we're in the big truck. That's impressive. So I really love the feeling. <laughs> yeah, we're often looking down on people while they're looking up at us. Um, some of the new telephone loving uh, generation, I can't seem to get their attention. Um, and I'm not willing to be like, you know, the motorcycle guys that change their exhaust, 
pierce your ears and then think everyone's looking at them because they're oh oh so cool um you know a really nice motorcycle is really cool don't get me wrong but a really loud motorcycle guess what they're looking at you because you're bothering them now i don't <laughs> want to do that with the bronco but i would like a happy medium the 2.7 liter is dead quiet unfortunately i spent about 500 dollars on stripes instead of getting um uh, rough country <laughs> muffler by the way the rough no, country is not a Mustang, yeah maybe. she's trying to always <laughs> convince me not to get the exhaust but the, by the way the rough country exhaust is really affordable and um, but you have to get rid of the, your tow hooks so that bugs me uh and i'm a cheap guy but uh, and the ones from the ford accessories catalog look amazingly built but i'm a cheap guy i'm so cheap that in the past normally when i want to build an exhaust i'll um you know just go through kind of like the exhaust uh, bin and uh, find something that's like a hundred dollars and then just spend a whole lot of time burning myself um, trying to weld on an exhaust uh, if you've really followed the the channel you've seen julian my mechanic buddy um, and i've got a few other mechanic buddies that can testify to how i will spend hours to save some money but i don't want to do that to the bronco and that's the thing i don't want to frankenstein the bronco have these ugly welds just to save a few dollars and i'm not sure if i'm willing to spend a thousand dollars on an exhaust on a bronco that will you know be replaced by an f-150 lightning unless the channel really takes off you know the, hitting the like button really helps and the subscribe button really helps um but um after that i definitely want to get into thanks for hitting the like button right there but after that i definitely want to get into a green bronco because that is my absolute dream i at first when the bronco first came out i was like oh they're gonna do retro colors i'm gonna get my green and she's like no don't do green and i was like no no i really, oh, I sorry, really that was, sorry that was sorry that was a mario accent i don't mean to present her as a massaged italian uh and nowadays you probably get in trouble for impersonating uh anyone of any you know anything else but you know I like laughing. <laughs> I hope you do too. Um, but uh, yeah, I really had hoped for green and then boom, no green. And I was really antimatter uh, blue. And that was our number one choice. The first car that we... Yeah. And she said, hey, if you're going to go off, ever consider going off-roading, we're both kind of perfectionists. We like our vehicles to be really beautiful. And uh, she was like, no, nah, you're, you, you're going to hit that up with the compound way too. You're going to spend your weekends waxing it's and compounding dark. it. It's too dark. So we took the blue kind of as a compromise. And now they're getting rid of antimatter blue. Um, they're getting rid of Dave's color. Uh, but thankfully, I think Dave is getting a 2021. So I'm really happy that he will get his color. Um, so that's that. You know, I ruined the Bronco and uh, <laughs> she's not a fan of the accessories. Um, people are wondering when uh, people at work have been asking me, so your wife there, uh, is she, she going to be taking off thinking that you're you're no longer interested in her. So anyways, I've been getting teased a lot about those stripes. Um, there are some really nice stripes. Um, you know, the good news is easy to pull off. So <laughs> yeah, make a decision. <laughs> she listens to me about uh, car accessories the way I listened to her about renovations. When we first moved here, I didn't realize I had said yes to what I thought would have been like the next 10 years of renovations. But apparently I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I was actually saying yes to doing it all before we moved in which was eight weekends that we had to do all the renovations she wanted. So at least now she's helping me build the dream garage. And now we listen <laughs> when I am speaking. <laughs> yeah, but what's funny so is... won't say yes to anything. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure if you remember, you were actually quite really picking on me for those stripes. You're thinking, you, you're kind of saying like, oh, you really don't have good taste. Like, you know, how could you kind of make this decision on your own? And I was like, hey, my brother thought it was nice and you know she's like why would you listen to your brother he probably just didn't want to listen to you he's probably too busy at work to listen to you and i was like no it was his idea and then i reminded her actually at the breakfast table i showed her on my cell phone i'm like hey these stripes right here and her answer was uh, oh yeah no, no no they're nice they're nice so anyways <laughs> she listens to me but about defense, accessories when i saw it it was quick and I saw like it was uh, just orange and uh, uh, gray contouring. So I was like, yeah, it could, could fit with the, the, the sticker Badlands that it's uh, already orange. So, but I, I don't see the picture that 
God, how can I say that? I, I don't see it like it was. <laughs> yeah. So my advice to anyone out there who's looking at, you know, adding stripes or really adding anything to the vehicle, if it's design wise, look at it on at least a lab's uh, laptop, blow it up on your TV, but don't try to look at it on, uh, you know, a tiny little screen because I myself thought it was just going to be black and orange, but if there's black, orange, green, yellow, red, it's the whole freaking sunset. Um, yeah, it's, it's really a sunset. <laughs> That's Not, what it is. You know, I always like to share. I'm going to be sharing a meme or two at the end of my videos. And, uh, you know, this one kind of really made me laugh today. It says, uh, wife, the wife asks, you know, did you just buy more Bronco parts? And you say, question, you know, option A, I got a deal on them. Option two, it was an accident. No, I had these for years. Or option D, you look, <laughs> you look pretty today. So, you know, if any of you want to find that on the internet, Maverick memes have, and Bronco memes have just exploded. They're a barrel of laughs, but back to actual, some useful information. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked right there. Um, some people have been really thinking that hybrids aren't going to get built. They are actually getting built. They will arrive early on. And, you know, you have to keep in mind though. So I got one question saying, are, our, our build's going to be going, uh, sorry, I, I had a question. Someone kind of mentioned and questioned that if they don't have a build now, is Ford doing this deliberately? Ford isn't doing this deliberately. You don't, you know, with this manufacturer, you don't get a build date six, seven, eight months in advance. And actually that wouldn't be very respons responsible because yeah. you don't know what your furniture, what your, uh, uh, fournisseur, furnishers, um, yeah. suppliers. If you will have the, all the supplies, yes. Yeah, your suppliers, you don't know. You, you build a contract with them, but you don't know if they're going to be delivering yeah. uh, on schedule or not eight months in advance. Don't know if your shop will be closed for the COVID too. So yeah, yeah that, that's new things that we need to deal with. But traditionally at Ford and for most manufacturers, they're not planning six, eight, nine months down the road. So if you don't have a build date, it doesn't mean you're not getting built until 2023, as some discouraged individuals have said. It just means right now, if you don't have a build date, I believe I would think at most dealers, um, all the build dates for November builds have been given out. I do very strongly believe we're now on to December. Um, I know that uh, I originally had hoped that she'd get the second build. My my local dealer had two builds for the November. She doesn't have either one of them. So we're hoping now for January. And this is how the timeline goes. If she gets, a, sorry, a December build, that would mean a January, more or less delivery, because you can figure anywhere from miracle, you know, one and a half weeks maybe, from when it's actually built, finished being built, because like my Bronco, what I saw, it went in on August 16th. On the 25th, the system said it had been built, but then the date on my truck, on my sticker on my Bronco says the 21st. So it was actually finished being built on the 21st. And uh, then it showed up on September 10th. And I'm not exactly beside the factory. It, it must be, heck, must be a good... 14 to 16 hours. And I got my, my ETA was for the end of September and I got it on the 10th. I completely surprised her. Didn't tell her that it had shown up or anything. So that was a, a nice surprise until she said it was the best day of her life. But anyways, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll need to stop picking on her for that because she's going to continue to think that I'm ruining the style of the vehicle um, <laughs> completely out of spite. So let's see general thoughts on uh, yeah, well, the Bronco, um, general thoughts on looks and interior. I, I'll let Marie speak because I think we share the same opinion on the interior. Generally, major journalists will just tear a vehicle apart if it's plasticky on the inside. If there's any plastic, it's the end of the world, and they kind of just scrap the vehicle altogether, um, which I think is unfortunate. It has us miss out on what could be, you know, great vehicles. And in the case of the Bronco, it is absolutely freaking amazing. I have very, very small contentions, but you know, sometimes it's just about being logical. Like my hood had this vibration at highway speeds. And before I went online and was like, Oh my goodness, my Bronco has this major issue. It's completely, it's complete crap. And then, you know, get a hundred thousand views and go, ha, ha I made my money. No, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. 
um, I, I went to the dealer and said, hey, my hood vibrates. And like, hey, don't worry. We can, that's, that's easy. Anyways, they went out, they played around with the adjusters on the hood, which I don't know why I didn't think of this. I've done it on my Mustang in the past, um, but new vehicle, excited, nervous, but not. Uh, they adjusted it. They had it done within, you know, 10 minutes. And now my hood doesn't vibrate at all. So a lot of things can be resolved. The sound system is fantastic. We have the bass sound system and it does. And I say fantastic based on people having said it was horrible. It's not actually, you know, mind blowing and amazing. It just, it does the job very well. We've driven with the top down and, you know, cranked up the sound. The music sounded good. It had a a lot of bass once we made the adjustments, mm -hmm. but uh, I'll, I'll let you cover that. And yes, cover uh, that. and for the interior, what I could say is uh, they made a, a square exterior and we find the same line inside. So I think it's a, a, a good continuation of the, the look. And on our Badlands, we have the little handle with a, a, an orange line on it so it uh, it's like the the the, the sticker the, for the bad lens the same color so i really love uh, that kind of little details like that that fits inside and outside uh what i love the most i think it's the seats uh the seats uh, the the, the yeah. vinyl seats um like like it's a boat but yeah, we we yeah. own we owned a boat Ugly before. Ugly like a boat. <laughs> yeah, I know we we owned a boat. And it, the the seats were they're hot and whatnot, and they were they're kind yeah. of ugly. They're shiny. The seats on the Bronco, that it's marine like grade vinyl, ma marine grade lets you know it's you know not it's it's good quality, mm -hmm. but it kind of gives the wrong impression because it's it's actually awesome. It's textured. You know, you're yeah, talking all texture, about that. The lines that we see in it, it, it looks like uh, what what we normally see in a, in a car, but uh, this one is it's very surprising and it's comfortable. Uh, so yes, I really love the the interior for that. Uh, yeah. No, mm -hmm. and uh, the drive is. I'm not the only one that That's finds smooth. it smooth, right? Yeah, really smooth. Goes over any bump without you really realizing it or noticing it. Yeah, the big uh, tires help. Big tires. And that's the that's amazing. I thought these tires were going to be really noise, noisy. And no, no, no. they're not at all noisy. I did tonight, you know, for this video, the roads were wet. So I put down the windows and I did listen to the tires. I heard them ever so slightly if I had the radio off. And I now have 1,500 kilometers, so about... Uh, divide by uh it, it'd be about a thousand um a thousand miles and actually that reminds me of a very important point breaking in your new ford uh, i was looking up uh, i believe it's page 213 on the ranger um order um owner's manual you do kind of need to break in or you should break in your new ford so when you get your new bronco your new maverick breaking it in what do you need to do it's really simple you want to vary vary your speed often, and you don't want to, you know, force the engine. And by force or you know, beat the engine, what I mean is don't you know, don't press the pedal so far down that you force the engine to shift at a high RPM. You want it to be shifting at a low RPM, so be gentle on that floor pedal, and have the speeds vary. So you don't want to just jump on the highway and do you know, a thousand miles or 1500 kilometers and just drive 60 miles per hour or 70 miles per hour for what probably would be 15 hours. Uh, yeah. About let's say 10 to 15 hours. I don't want to do the math right now. It's too late for that. Uh, it's almost, it's almost 10 30 and we're normally going to bed at this time, but don't just jump on the highway and, you know, keep the exact same speed. So vary your speed don't have the rpm go high on the motor that's how you break in your new ford that's what's recommended now we have talked about the fx4 and uh, you know marie does normally go to bed at this time so i will have to let her go soon but i'm sure i have one more question for her um one thing that i did really want to mention in tonight's live session and i'm sorry i'm putting it at the end is that ford's actually working really hard to do two things to resolve one major problem that's been bothering people tremendously people have been getting really bothered by dealers magically having inventory on models that they shouldn't have inventory for like the bronco and we're probably going to see it for a little bit on the maverick 
but um, there is an article on this. So this does come, you know, this is sourced. It's called the 2021 Bronco Customer Name Match Audit and Integrity Policy Reporting Platform. I'll be doing a video maybe just on this coming up because this is fantastic news. I did say that I suspected earlier on that Ford would try to, um, you know, get dealers to, you know, not sell over MSRP, first of all, and not have, you know, to really allow Ford to focus on their customers about getting them their build. So what this policy does essentially is they're randomly going to be checking. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken here, 60% of the orders to make sure that orders do match a customer, uh, a real customer. So that's going to make sure that dealers actually order. And there is a penalty to this. The first time it's a warning. The second time, I believe you get less allocations for one month. And then if you get three strikes, uh, the penalty will be set up for three months. So dealers, if, you know, for example, what's, what is this going to resolve? Well, if you make an order for Marie-Pierre, for a Bronco. And then when the Bronco shows up, you go, Marie-Pierre, you want that Bronco. It's 20,000 over MSRP. If Marie-Pierre says, no, I'm not taking that Bronco. Well, that means it doesn't, the order versus the delivery, the names don't match up. So that's going to cost them allocations. And in my region, what I can tell you is the real talk is actually more severe and interesting. Uh, they're talking about a 90% rule, meaning 90% of your vehicles um, that you ordered for, a, for an individual in their name need to be delivered to that individual. One issue is if Marie Pia decides to put her vehicle last minute in her business's name, I'm hoping that there'll be some leniency mm -hmm. and that that will be able to be explained. But a 90% rule would make it that if more than 10% of a dealer's clients aren't getting the, the Broncos, if there's like a, you know, you have to deliver basically to 90% of the people that you you ordered for. And if you don't, you get less allocation. So you try to make a whole lot of money on, you know, some faked invented clients, Bronco or Mavericks. Well, you're going to get penalized because you're going to get less volume. So Ford is very active in trying to resolve the, in my opinion, the over MSRP issue, as well as these, you know, fake client vehicles that are really just inventory for the dealer. Ford wants to focus on their customers. And that's awesome. That's great. So for anyone who is doubting, thinking that Ford has been doing all this deliberately to get more money, it doesn't pay Ford any more money. They sell to dealers the vehicle all at the same price. Whether your dealer is selling, you know, 300 units a year or they're selling 3,000 units per year, you're buying the vehicles at the same price from Ford. So Ford is selling them out to all these dealers at the same price. And if the dealer sells them for over MSRP, it's only the dealer making extra money. So I think... It's not Ford's fault. The, it's not them who charge for the, the extra price. Now, real quickly, Ford news in regards to electric power, because this is pretty exciting. The building price should be available October 26th for the electric F-150, that's the F-150 Lightning. Um, I will hopefully be having one for the channel real early on. Um, and since 2011, Ford has been dishing out a lot of money. Um, every, every couple of years, they seem to increase their budget. Uh, I have talked about that. Originally, they did a little business, I think, with Toyota, if I'm not mistaken. But at one point, they wanted to increase the budget. Toyota didn't follow along. And Ford stepped up their game in 2011 and said, you know what, we'll put $8 billion. And that has actually increased so much more over the years because Blue Oval City is now going to be a thing. It's six square miles of factory. It's where the next electric, so Generation 2 F-150 will be made right there. It's a full battery plant. It's also a battery recycling center. They're putting $11.4 billion to build this. It's 11,000 jobs. By 2025, they hope to have that running. They want it to be carbon neutral. They want it to reuse all the water it takes in, meaning, you know, if they take a normal factory takes in, let's say 50,000 gallons a day and then only uses half of it, um, the rest isn't going to be getting dumped with all sorts of 
pollution and pollutants and materials and whatnot getting dumped with that water. So all the water they take in, they will reuse until it's been completely used up. So that's great. No polluted water and zero landfill waste. So that's incredible. I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but they're, they, they're promising to pull that off. Uh, also, first Mavericks arriving 14 to 20 days early. Um, the first location, I believe, was in San Antonio. And it was an XLT with a 2.0 FX4 with spray and bed liner. So kind of like the, um, the hybrid, same color that was ordered two months after yours. We could say your replacement Bronco or the person who pushed you aside. And uh, they didn't really push you aside. It was my error. But um, they have a spray and bed liner as well. So that's in San Antonio. And it showed up 14 to 20 days earlier than the ETA that they have been given. So Ford is actually looks like huge success in regards to um, bringing mm -hmm. out Mavericks thus far. That's so good news. that's good news. And hopefully <laughs> that's what's going to happen for you. If you are looking for a video with a road test before this Tuesday at 5 a.m., you can look at Mr. Boom 5.0. He drives that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Andy Ackerman, thank you very much for the $9.99. Uh, like Dave, I also find odd numbers cool, but I especially like it when they match you know, six, 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 uh, not six, 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 but nine, 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 three, three, three. That's five, five, five. That's, that's all very good. Um, also I just want to cover, uh, in case people missed this in Tim's video, which is actually really awesome, always awesome material from uh, Tim. Um, and he covered it, but I want to cover it tonight. High capacity. Someone asked the question, and I got this asked this question as well on my feed, I think a week ago. They're saying, what happens when you go from 4K towing and you also add FX4, or vice versa? You take FX4 and you add 4K towing to the Maverick. You know, what's going on? Uh, what's going on is that the FX4 package has the high capacity radiator and you know the, the the cooling fan. Whereas when you go to 4K, the reason you can tow 4K is because it has a heavy duty uh, transmission with oil cooler. So it's the oil cooler, added oil cooler on the transmission, you can pull 4K. Um, and of course, in regards to having your warranty, you know, good by Ford, if you have an FX4 package, even though you're figuring high capacity rad means a bigger rad and a better cooling, uh, the fan, better cooling, you think you can pull more. I'd say don't go against what Ford tells you because you want your warranty if anything goes wrong to be valid. So, you know, I'd say don't pull more than 2,000 pounds. Follow Ford's rules. Um, you'll just pull 2,000 pounds and do it that much cooler. Didn't mean for the really cheesy pun, but I am known for cheesy puns. So, you know, Maddie needs to head to bed, choose our special guest for tonight. So we'll cover what we didn't cover in all these notes that I took at uh, another uh, Maverick. Um, not Maybe not so live because I'm not sure if I'm ready to do live on my own. But the whole point of this really was to get Marie in here so she can be part of Marie Pierre, so she can be part of the whole process. Um, you know, I work 50 some hours a week and then I do this channel for 20 to 30 hours a week. So she wasn't seeing me a whole month, whole bunch. You've seen Winston <laughs> jump on up on me during these videos, and that's because he misses me too. So I want to get her in. So uh she thank you for having me. Yeah, well, it's it is it's nice. It's <laughs> was nice, nice seeing to, you <laughs> to be with you guys tonight. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for showing, showing up for the live. I really appreciate you, you know, spending the night with me having, you know, whatever, whether it's coffee, tea, Coca-Cola, whatever, whatever you're drinking, really appreciate grabbing a drink with all you. I'll do my best to get back to the live chat. If you have a specific question you really want me to look at, drop it in the comments section because after this, the video goes into, um, it's no longer live, but it's available and that's when you can throw in comments. So of course, as usual, I will try my absolute best to get to all comments. Thank you so much for showing Thank up you. tonight. <laughs> and um, hopefully maybe we can have you back on the show in the future. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Thanks everyone. <laughs> Uh, I wish you this week, you know, a fantastic week. I hope you all get to put the pedal to the metal and I wish you all more cars and more power. Take care.